Good day, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce a video series, Hemophilia Guidelines for All, which is a new ambition for the World Federation of Hemophilia. This is the third edition of the guidelines. My name is Glenn Pierce. I'm the Vice President of Medical for the World Federation of Hemophilia, and it's my pleasure to introduce them to you. For purposes of the guidelines, I have nothing to disclose. The treatment guidelines have been in existence since the early 2000s with the first edition. This is the third edition and has brought together a distinguished panel of clinical experts from around the world, led by Alok Saribastava. You can see that the leads of the various chapters are all listed uh, here. Uh, and then they have been supplemented by other clinical experts from around the world who have contributed uh, to the um, uh, synthesis of the guidelines. Interestingly and uniquely for these guidelines, we have added a number of individuals with hemophilia uh, or their caregivers uh, as panelists to provide a patient perspective to the guidelines as well. Uh, and then I want to especially acknowledge the guidelines methodology leadership team uh, led by Donna Coffin, uh, the director of research for the World Federation of Hemophilia. Uh, and uh, they organized all of the panelists as well as the, uh, the guidelines themselves. Uh, so what are these guidelines all about? Well, this 2020 update reflects the dramatic changes in treatment that have occurred over the past 10 or so years uh, within hemophilia worldwide. We have a total of 12 chapters. Six of those are new chapters uh, and a total of 340 practical recommendations. The new chapters are shown here and they involve a lot of the new treatment advances uh, and care management advances that have occurred over these past 10 years or so, including prophylaxis inhibitors, lots of progress in genetic assessment, and a tremendous amount of work on outcome methodologies uh, that have uh, been instituted over these past, uh, this past decade. We've also designed these guidelines to be applicable globally. Uh, and by that, I mean that it doesn't matter whether you have an abundance of clotting factor available or very small amounts of clotting factor available. The recommendations are designed to allow you to maximize the treatment potential and the management potential for patients, uh, regardless of where you are uh, in the world. And I'll note that they're also available in five languages as well. Uh, and these guidelines have uh, vastly improved methodology uh, we have systematic reviews. We have done um, uh, a series of um, uh, consensus statements uh, based upon uh, the uh, expertise of our panel. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned, have added individuals with hemophilia to provide that kind of a perspective. So what are they all about? Well, they uh, can be downloaded from the WFH website. Uh, and uh, each of the chapters can be reviewed. Uh, but we also have developed a, um, a video guide to each chapter that has been done by the lead author of the chapter. Uh, and these are available on the WFH website as well. And we'll go into specific detail on the recommendations for the topics for those chapters. So I look forward to uh, seeing these and uh, in reviewing them and in seeing how they can be a benefit to maximize the potential of treatment for all uh, for individuals with hemophilia around the world. I do want to thank the Hemophilia Alliance for their support in developing this presentation uh, and the, uh, the videos for these guidelines. Thank you.